have you looked a little at your at the problems and uh, does it make any sense to you can you find find something I would like just like to refer to uh, you to uh, this uh, document which is a book actually uh, by, by uh, David Mackay uh, and I, I believe that was loaded onto your uh, on, onto the uh, course set and you can read it there huh? don't print it uh, if you want to print parts of it the parts which concern you uh, you can have a couple of copies uh, uh, pages from me and do the printing uh, or you can take the book there's a book of it in, in the library and just print those uh, because there's lots of stuff in here but I think you can read in this a little bit about the spirit of what we want to do uh, and the spirit is uh, to really quantify uh, the different things as he says uh, we don't want adjectives like oh there's so much of this and there's only a little of that and so on we need to know how much and how little so uh, we want to quantify things for that we need to have uh, units we need to talk about the units in which we will quantify it and uh, we're talking about energy and I'll come to that topic later and we will talk talk a little about the units but that is an important thing and you will pick it up there that he does this all the time I can tell you something about uh, David Mackay uh, he was uh, uh, he, he's, he still is I presume uh, a professor in Cambridge in information technology uh, things uh, inf uh, uh, d determining how information is stored and, 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 and things like that so that was his field um, and he came to Ames very often he's a great lecturer uh, came to Ames very often and at one time uh, initially he talked about systems of uh, storing information and how you quantify that and so on but in one year uh, he decided to do this course uh, the, the course in uh, concepts in physics or physics physical problem solving and he started to do a number of the things for the first time things I will be doing now too uh, and uh, uh, he, he enjoyed it very much he calculated all sorts of energies everywhere uh, how much energy does it take uh, you from running up to the bathroom and coming down and, and things like that and, and how, how, how everything was ca uh, quantified in, in terms of energy uh, and then when he went back uh, again to uh, uh, to Cambridge he uh, he was appointed <coughs> as an advisor to the British government on uh, on energy, and uh, so he started to talk about the energy problem within Britain, and uh, he wrote this book not for the uh, not for the British government but for himself and for people who are interested in what it is and he, he quantifies a lot of things about a plan for energy in Britain and so that is what this thing is about and I think it's we don't need to follow it we don't need to read everything but it's interesting to look at some of the things uh, and uh, if you pick a topic you'll probably find that topic in his in his book you can just read about what he does and it gives you a good start and then you can look for further for further information uh, I don't know when we should select uh, 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 select the topics and uh, Emma did you did you 
they have already selected by the end of today okay and they give it to you okay so Emma will uh, uh, will collect the different things and then we can you can discuss with me and with her uh, with the other tutors um, about the topics and uh, and then we start start going I think we uh, need to have some sessions here uh, where you where you really work on your problems and you can then also go to the uh, to, to the uh, lab and and work work on on it there if you want to google certain things or want to do a calculation and so on you know? okay uh, so uh, let me just start uh, uh, and do something of, of the function I want to play, uh, the, the thing I want to do here, uh, and that is to give you some background on uh, on on the on the physics uh, which we will need, and also give you some idea of how physics is being done. And. I, we will do simple things and we will talk about how physics is being done. Now, physics has been done under this sort of name in general for many, many years. And, I th and it has been done in uh, various parts of the world, uh, in China and in, in, in Africa, and in uh, the Middle East and so on. Uh, but the, the sort of run which I will take as a traditional one is how, is it, how did it develop for uh, what we now call the, the Western world? I mean, the, the, the science of, of uh, the way science is being done today. Now, this is not the only way people have thought about physics. There are many other ways, but uh, the, the first people who really started formulating physics within this uh, path which I'm trying to, to explain uh, are the Greeks. And, uh, and, the, in, uh, and the great philosophers of, of Greece were uh, Socrates and Plato and the, the, son, and, and the student of Plato was Aristotle. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, uh, I think that's spelled correctly. Uh, uh, and and he uh, he he, start, he he actually formulated what was for, uh, was physics for Europe for a very long time. He was a very dominant uh, philosopher, and one of the. Uh, problems uh, people had is why do things fall down? I mean, as I showed yesterday, I, uh, if, I, if I let the, that uh, 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 razor, razor let, if, if I let it loose, it falls down. Why does it fall down? And, uh, and so Aristotle had this philosoph philosophical idea uh, that there are natural places of, of all things and for and and the and the world existed uh, of uh, earth and fire and uh, and and air and water and that's it um, and the and earth was basically everything we call mat material these days uh, and and he said well the natural place for material is on the earth and so if you take it away it will return to the earth it will fall down that's because that's where it belongs uh, so that was his his physics and uh, <clears throat> and then he had a, a rule which was happened to be incorrect uh, which was that big things falls more quickly than small things the bigger it is, the more quickly it falls. Well, these days we know that's not true, but uh, that was his philosophy. And 
he was such a dominant person in the philosophy of science uh, that uh, he lived uh, 300, uh, 300 and something uh, years uh, before Christ. Uh, avant Jésus Christ. <coughs> Uh, uh, so, so that's when he lived, and, and up to about 1500, to the AD, uh, there was really nothing, nothing re somebody tried to say against the ideas of Aristoteles. So that was, and it was actually his dominance was a, was a problem as far as I th I'm concerned uh, uh, about the, uh, uh, the develop uh, for the development of science. Now the one thing he did not do, he did not measure and he did not do mathematics for, for, uh, uh, for, for uh, science, uh, in science, in his description. Mathematics was, as you know, in that time from, uh, from Plato and so on, the mathematics was already well developed, but it was not used. Uh, philosophers were talking about these things, and they did not measure, and they didn't quantify it. And they, if they made statements, many of the statements were wrong. Uh, there was this story of uh, uh, the Greek philosophers uh, were arguing uh, there is, uh, if you take a bucket, uh, what's a bucket in French? Hmm? A what? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it's full of water to the rim. And you take a fish and you put it into that water. Uh, why doesn't the water spill over? I mean, this was a, this was a this was a central philosophical debate for for a, one of these Greek groups. And then there was a young guy like you who came up and he listened to this and he, he got the fish and he put it in and the the water run, it spilled over. And he was excluded. <laughs> you, don't, you don't do that. Uh, you see, this, is, this, this was the philosophy of, of science then. And, uh, and this has changed then with, with people. Uh, many people have been in the 15th, 16th, and 17th century uh, have changed that view. And uh, the, uh, and we can talk about guys like Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, have you heard about him? Leonardo da Vinci was a, was a genius. He could do everything. Uh, <coughs> and uh, I had the uh, opportunity to visit a small town in France uh, called Amboise. And that is a place where all the uh, Leonardo da Vinci stayed in the last part of his, his life and uh, the king had invited him to have a house there and there are lots of things you can see. He, he started flying and he, started, he did many, many things. Anyway, Leonardo da Vinci also thought about this problem of the falling body. It wasn't solved then, even though he could do all these fancy things he had no idea about what happens if a thing falls. And so he, he thought a little about it and he said, well, you know, when you have it up here and you drop it, then it, in the first time interval, uh, it falls one, a distance of one unit meter or something. And the second time uh, interval, 
it falls a distance of 2. And the third time interval, it falls a distance of 3. And so on. And so he had this, this rule. Uh, and, uh, uh, and there were many people talking about this. So this, is, this is what happened at that time. And uh, if you check that, that's wrong, of course. But uh, he at least tried. Now, the, the first guy who got it right uh, was Galilei. You all know about Galilei. He's the, he's, he was just a, he was a, he was a super genius, and uh, and he said, no, that it, can't, it can't be that. It it is this way. It's it's only the odd numbers which count. I mean, just think about how these people argue. It's the odd numbers that count. So. The first instance it falls a unit of one. And the second falls a unit of three. And the next one it falls a unit of five. The next one it falls a unit of seven. It's just just the odd numbers. And uh, was he right or was he wrong? I'm, I'm, I'm proposing a model for, for how it falls. We use odd numbers. We use number theory to do these things. Is it right? Yes, yeah, someone is doing a calculation. Give him a chance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope some others will also try to do calculations. I can, I can just tell you, uh, after I had finished my PhD, I went, for the first time, I went to Germany, and, and I, I basically as a postdoc. And uh, I visited uh, a place in Munich, which is called the Deutsche Museum, the German Museum, which is a wonderful place. And uh, it, was, it is a science museum. At that time, there were very few science museums, but this one was there already. We now have lots of science museums, so one in Cape Town. You must go and visit it. We have uh, science museums in, in, uh, in, in Johannesburg and, and everywhere, and all the, the world over. There are lots of places, towns which have very nice science material. But this one, I, uh, which I visited, uh, I walked in and I heard do, 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 do. Clearly equal intervals. And, uh, or a shell, more like clack, 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 clack. Clearly, uh, clear intervals. And, and I thought, well, what's this? And, and, uh, and I looked up and I saw this apparatus, very high apparatus, and they had a they had they had a little uh, piece of metal which was picked up by an, uh, by, by, by a pulley, it was picked up to the top, and then it was dropped, and it fell, and it hit a shell as it fell down. And so, and it was hitting them in, in equal time intervals. And these time intervals were uh, uh, in equal time intervals. And then they had marked on this hole there, they had marked the different distances. And the first distance was one, one meter. And the second distance was marked four meters. And the third distance was marked nine meters. And the next one was marked 16 meters. So, and you could hear, uh, it, and although I had done all the physics, uh, you know, I had already done my PhD and so on, that actually was such a wonderful demonstration of, of how 
how this thing works is that the distance it falls is goes with the square square of the time and uh, uh, Galilei already had formulated that but in, in a different language uh, so, so that, that is actually an interesting part of the history but I don't want to do too much history uh, with you I just want to say after this these people who had done these wonderful uh, had op started opening the doors to thinking in different ways uh, there came uh, the very, very important person, Sir Isaac Newton. And Newton formulated uh, three laws. And I'll, you know them, but we will discuss them nevertheless. I must say, uh, before I say what uh, Newton said, I must just say uh, what Aristoteles had said before, which was also wrong. Aristoteles had said, the natural p position of something is to be at rest. So everything is at rest. Unless you push it. So his, his argument was, in order for something to move, you have to apply a force. And if you don't do that, it will be at rest. So the default option, as we would say these days, is it's at rest. Uh, and uh, if, if you want it to move, you have to apply, apply a force. And that makes sense, actually, if you think of it. But it's nevertheless wrong. Uh, uh, and so, Newton's first big change was to say everything moves uniformly if you do nothing. Being at rest is one possibility, but the default option is uh, P is equal to MV is equal to a constant. That's Newton's first law. That, uh, is that right? So it's, hmm? Are we It's okay? So Newton's first law is, defines, this, defines the, the default option. Default option is, if you don't do anything, everything will continue to move. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and of course you would say, no, but many things, if I push them, they will move for a while and they stop. And we will discuss that, but it falls within Newton's laws. Which, which, but that's just, so the first law of Newton is the conservation of momentum. P, uh, uh, I'll write P very often for M times V. Momentum is actually a more basic thing than, than velocity. Uh, so, uh, but we'll come to that later. But P uh, is M times V, and that is a constant. That is the first law, Newton 1. And Newton 2 is, uh, well, if you push it, then the momentum changes, uh, which says if I have a force, that will be equal to dp dt. And Newton actually introduced uh, introduced. Um, uh, differential calculus in order to do as the way he, 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 he th thought. Other people were, were busy with it as well, but he, he actually introduced it. And so, or you may want to have it like this, or you may have it, want to have it like that, 
but it's it's all the same. Uh, so that's that's Newton's Newton's uh, second law. Uh, and Newton's third law is if you have a if you apply a, f a force to something, then there is a reaction to it. And so the action is equal to uh, the opposite direction of the, uh, the reaction is opposite direction of the action, uh, but equal in size. Uh, so uh, how should I write that? F uh, reaction is equal to minus F of the action. And these are, uh, these are the, uh, the, the three laws uh, which, which he introduced. Now this was, this was a tremendous shift. And that's why I told this other story. This was a tremendous shift. And except for if, uh, uh, further developments which occurred mainly in the previous century, there's still a valid theory for for, for science. It's, it's valid for everything we will be doing in, in this, this, or almost everything. Now we'll do some quantum mechanics, uh, but this is the, the basis of classical mechanics. Now, you will, you will, uh, you will think, well, this is, this is not very, to say momentum is conserved uh, it's, not, it's, it's not such a big deal, is it? I mean, uh, you just say if something moves, it keeps on moving and so on. But it is actually a very, very important instrument to understand. Because Newton's ideas went beyond the, the point. This is actually formulated as a point which is an abstraction of any, po uh, any piece of material, to make it a point is an abstraction of it. Uh, so, but he, he also considered a collection of points. So the point is, this thing also applies if I have two pieces which are, uh, which are connected to each other, and, and they, they do all sorts of things, they still have which you all know about is the center of mass, and that center of mass carries that property. So it's not just a single point necessarily. It can be uh, uh, when you, when you uh, drive a car. Uh, the, the momentum of the car, except for air resistance and things like that, uh, um, or if you look at our sun and uh, our solar system and you look at the planets then the whole planet has this property that its momentum is is, is uh, uh, well the planet, well sorry that wasn't a good example uh, because there's a force there uh, but uh, then for this thing it applies to the to the full to the full plan uh, to a planet, which is a big thing. It's not a point. Uh, so the idea, which here initially is being uh, considered for for point particles, it can be expanded to a collection of points and a collection of material. And so, and, and if you then look at this, then these equations, like P is a constant, they are still today, to, uh, tonight uh, you will have a talk at CERN, uh, you, you're still the same, if they do reactions, they look at the conservation of momentum. And there are many particles there, but the total momentum is conserved. And this is actually already conceptualized in what, what Newton has said. And what we have to do, and this is uh, what we will be doing in this, this course, uh, is to interpret these equations for the specific condition which we are looking at. Because, in a sense, 
Aristoteles was right. If I push, if I roll a ball, it'll just roll and then it'll stop at some point. But the thing is, it has a force on it and we will have to put that in. And so the total force is not zero on that ball and that's why it stops. I mean, this is the way Newton was, uh, was thinking about these things. Okay? So I think in all of classical mechanics, uh, you, can, you can still today, except when it becomes relativity, uh, you can still work with these equations. Classical mechanics is a beautiful subject. There are nice books in the library. You can read about it and it's formulated in different ways uh, through Lagrangian theory and Hamiltonian theory and so on. Do you know Lagrangian theory? Uh, do you know Hamiltonian theory? Okay, and they are, you don't? It doesn't matter, we'll talk about it. Uh, <coughs> but they, they, they look, uh, they look as a, a, like a different, different field, but in fact they, they all agree with, with Newton's laws. Okay? Yes? Yes. Yes. The first one, you say that things could end You say that it's not. The second one, you say that if it's not empty. Yes. That P doesn't pass the first one? No, no. Uh, this is if there is no force on, uh, on this system, then P is a constant if the force is zero. In a sense, it, it is included here. If I make this zero, if I make uh, uh, F zero, and that is equal to dP dt, uh, then of course P is a constant. Huh? So, so in, in that sense, they are, they are in, they, they, it's not a new statement. But the, the very idea of what happens if, there's, if nothing is being done. Uh, so what is the default state? Where do we start off? Uh, was such a huge shift from what Newton did from what was thought before. Uh, before the people would say, well if you have a, well I don't know whether they had wheelbarrows, but say if you have a wheelbarrow in order to move with your wheel wheelbarrow, you have to push it all the time. If you stop pushing, it stops. You know? Well, the and 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 so this was the life experience of people was things do not do not move unless you push them. And and Newton uh, realized that that was not the case. And 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 through this. Newton was able, and, and it's actually amazing that uh, people could do that. You see, at that time people knew a lot about planets and stars and so on. And that they could, could relate uh, the, the falling body to the movement of a, of a planet is, is actually quite... Uh, uh, and we will do that. Uh, but uh, that is actually quite amazing. That they say these laws are, and these are real laws, you know. So these are not little models or effects or something. These are laws. And you better stick to them, otherwise you're in problem. Uh, you have a problem. You know, if you break this law in any theory you make, you have a problem. Uh, but did I answer your question? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> okay, another question here? Yeah. The, 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 I, think, I think you will find a lot of literature about, uh, about uh, what 
uh, Newton's laws really are and whether and whether that isn't just the definition of mass and, and all this sort of thing. There's lots of stuff around this. Uh, but I don't want to go into that. Uh, we, we want to just understand them a little bit and then, and then uh, use them. Uh, so <coughs> let's, do, let's do uh, a very, uh, this, the simplest thing I can think of and just say uh, F F is just a function of time, of nothing else. It's just a function of time. And then we have that is equal to dP dt. And then we have P uh, final minus P initial. I'm, I'm just now taking this over there and integrating. Is equal to the integral from T initial to T final of, uh, of F of T dt. And this thing is what we call an impulse in English. I don't know, what is it called in French? Uh, uh, it's, it's sort of a sh shot. You, you, hmm? but, shock. Shock. A shock. Uh, so, so that's what a boxer does. He booms. <laughs> Just a short, short interval. So this is a way in which you can change P by just giving it a shock. Yeah? Uh, the, the particle or the thing you look at, you just hit it for a short time. No? So there's, there's one, one uh, for, formula which we, uh, one, one simple way we can think of uh, this force is, depends on time. And when we put it in for a short time, it will change the movement. And then afterwards, P, when the shock is passed, the, the uh, P will continue at the same, same time. Uh, but, uh, there are, but in general, F could be a function of, of many things. Uh, it could be the function of a position and the momentum or the velocity and of time. So le let us just look at what happens if if it's uh, just a position, uh, it's, it just depends on the uh, ah, uh, the, the exit, sorry. No, that's right. Uh, so, so we can now uh, write this thing as so. The the picture which we have is is there's a, there's a traject trajectory. Uh, we have a we have a particle that moves. It has a position and it moves with time. So with time it moves, uh, it moves, and that is uh, v uh, of uh, well v of x at each time uh, position it moves, and each position depends on on time where it is, <coughs> and uh, so we can now write this as m uh, dv dt. Uh, no, sorry, I, I've, uh, there must be T here. Uh, 
Okay? And so this I can also write as uh, this becomes a V. And that I can write as is equal to a half m d d x of v squared. So if I d differentiate this uh, d d x, then I get two v, and then d v d x. Hmm? Okay. So, so this is uh, this is the way I can write this. And now, if I write f uh, is equal to uh, I'll, I'll use a capital V here with a minus sign. If if I say that this function x I consider to be uh, a different. I get it by different, differentiating another function, and uh, so this other function basically is is defined as uh, minus f of x dx. I mean, this is this is the way I. I define this, this function, v, and then f is, of course, dv dx. Hmm? Okay? And, uh, and so this is equal to that. And so if I take these two together, uh, I get d dx. I take this one now, together with this one. I get d dx of a half m v squared plus v. Okay? And, and this is zero. And so, so it means uh, for all positions x where the particle can be, if I differentiate that, this quantity is the differential is, is zero, and which means that a half mv squared plus v is a constant. And so you see, uh, with a, just with the one line, which is even longer than one should should worry about doing, uh, you can do it much more quickly. But that in that line, you can see that that the conservation of energy. We call this now the kinetic energy, and we call that the potential energy. And the, this has a potential to produce a force onto the particle, and this, has a, and this is the motion of the particle. And so we see that this quantity is, is conserved. And you all, most of you had it up here. We have conservation of energy. No? So, but let's, let's just be sure that we realize what we're doing. We're making a very specific statement here. We're saying f looks like this. It's just a function of x and not of time. We've already seen that if we... Uh, if we, uh, if we make it a function of time, and we in, uh, then it changes the momentum, or it changes the, this term without anything else. So, so it, is, it is an application of a specific form of interaction, which leads to, uh, which, which leads to the conservation of energy. And this is a this is a very important result. The conservation of energy. Uh, someone called asked me 
uh, yesterday. Uh, what about the neutrino? Is, does it really exist? Who's heard about the neutrino? He has. Yeah? Okay. The neutrino is a is a particle which has no mass or little mass depending on your theory but at least very little mass and uh, it was postulated by by Pauli because Pauli was looking at reactions and uh, in the reactions he, they looked at the sum of all the energies and they didn't add up and uh, they looked at other quantities um, which we will talk about later about spin and so on and they were looking at all the spins and so on and it didn't add up so there was a reaction found which breaks all these laws conservation of energy and conservation of, uh, of other quantities and then he said well it can't be it's not possible and so he said there must be another particle which we don't see and he said there must be a neutrino and it was found later yes hello yes Oh, thank you. And, um, Is that right now? Yeah, okay. Okay. The second one? From M, D, V, D, X, V, equal to half. How this half comes in? Uh, if, I, if I differentiate this, dv squared dx then I get 2 times v dv dx okay and I've just put in the half because I know this will happen you know so, so I just put it in there so, so you uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a step in advance I could have done it differently you understand? So, so what this half does, it makes sure that this, uh, this, this, uh, this two disappears again. No? Okay? Okay? Now, now we can think about what these V's are. And uh, you, already, you already know what V is for, uh, for gravity uh, here on Earth. What is it? What is the quantity? No, uh, just here when we do a little experiment like dropping things. Uh. Hmm? MGH. Okay, so we say V is equal to MGX. Huh? So X is the position and, uh, and the V is MGX uh, and if we have a specific height we can call that height H. Huh? That is MGH. Huh? Okay, but uh, as a as a function of x, it's mgx. Eh? So, so this this v uh, which I plot as a function of x uh, looks like this. Eh? Okay, and and then if I 
if they hit the ground where x is zero, uh, then it's then I can't go further. Uh, so the way to do that is to make the potential infinitely high. Hmm? So I make it very very big. When it hits the ground, then it stops. Huh? And so this, so a, 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 a ball which I uh, have and I drop it, it falls to the ground, and then it can jump up again. Huh? So the way I can look at this is that this ball, and I'm assuming no re air resistance and, 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 and total elastic scattering, this ball will bounce, keep bouncing. Yeah? So how, do I can, how can I draw this? And the reason why I'm doing this is because we will be doing a lot of drawing. We will, do, uh, we will draw a lot of things rather than always writing uh, formulas. Yeah? The, the, so this thing has a specific energy. Uh, this is the height, the value of x, which I hold it. And the energy which this thing has is like that. So I'm plotting, uh, plotting the energy now here. Uh, so here, the uh, particle has no kinetic energy. The ball has no kinetic energy. It sits up here. And its total energy is, is mg times h mgx, and x is equal to h, and that's its kinetic energy, uh, uh, potential energy, its total potential energy. It has no kinetic energy. It's, I'm holding it here. Now I drop it. Now it, it moves to different values of x. It moves down. But its total energy, and here I'll plot now total energy, its total energy remains constant. So it moves like this, and uh, and then when it hits this uh, the floor, it turns back, and it runs over this way again, and it comes up to this level huh? again, and then this goes in. So this is a picture, uh, the energy picture of a bouncing ball. It, is, it keeps its energy all the time and it goes up and down and up and down and it changes its, its potential energy changes but its total energy is, uh, is, is the same. No? Okay? Uh, it, we will draw, we'll draw, draw other, other maybe I shouldn't Call, I should keep calling this V because we are looking here actually at the position. What is V of X of this position? This, whatever it misses from this value is equal to a half MV, X, uh, MV squared. That is the difference of the potential energy and its total energy. Hmm? So this, okay? Is it clear to you? I'll draw such pictures a lot because, uh, and, and I'm drawing it here specifically because it's easy to understand. Do you know what I'm doing? Hmm? Okay. So that's actually all still very simple. Uh, and let us now uh, consider uh, a slightly more uh, complicated case. And that is, we consider a ball, which I hold, but when it drops down, it, uh, uh, it, it loses energy as it hits the floor, and then it comes up ag uh, again. So if I draw this case, I should have done that first. I plot x dot there. So at h, 
we have the uh, the the position. I, I now I try to I try to draw a line where the ball is and what is its speed. So what I want to tell you is, I want to give you a graph so that you can say at that point this is the speed. Okay. So let's let's just see what happens here. If we look at this case, the the ball moves down, so x, x dot uh, gets increases but negatively because it falls down. So, so we have, we have a, such a trajectory. As time increases, the position of the ball goes to zero. Uh, and its speed increases or decreases in this case. So it, it, it increases in magnitude but decreases. Huh? So this is what's happening here. The ball is the ball is uh, here at at this position. It moves over this way now, and the kinetic energy increases. Or, or uh, the square of the kinetic energy increases, so this this x dot decreases. X dot is equal to dx dt. Okay. Until it hits the the floor, and then suddenly it changes its direction. So from this value which it has when it hits the floor, it goes to the opposite side. It, it, jump, it just turns around. And what happens is we have, we have this force, uh, which is uh, this force. The momentum changes. Uh, and then the uh, the particle, the ball is up here, and then this is a, it's still on the floor, but it has now a momentum in the opposite direction. It moves up now, and now as it moves up, it again moves towards that that point where I had dropped it, and then it falls down again. So I have this circular movement, or, or not circular, uh, we have this movement, and then it abruptly goes up and so on. Okay? Can you explain that? You understand that? Yeah. So it's a, it's a motion of the. I'm trying to give you a picture of a how I think of a ball that is just bouncing. Huh? I'm just giving you a picture of a, of a ball that is just bouncing. So it bounces, and it goes, uh, and it comes up again, and it bounces, and so on. And what it does all the time, it changes its position, and it changes its speed. Hmm? And this is a diagram to show how it changes its position and how it changes its speed. And when we, call the, when we put here, we could just as well have put here momentum. And uh, uh, so it changes its momentum and it, uh, because momentum is m times x dot. Um, 
and then we call that thing a phase diagram of the motion of of that ball so this is the uh, this is this is the way the f the phase and and this is this is just a talk I, I I don't want to go into the origin of the name but it is just it is a a word for such a diagram a phase a phase diagram which explains if you see that you actually know uh, what is happening you see you see if I show you this then I it wasn't necessary for me to tell you any of the other thing you can see everything just from here what happens is this thing well if I give you the starting point if what happens from this thing I see something is at this position it its uh, velocity is is decreasing in a negative is uh, becoming more and more negative it was zero there x dot was zero or its momentum was zero and then it goes to there and then at at that point it hits the floor and it goes up uh, the position is the position is still on the floor x is still zero but uh, the, the, the momentum is in the opposite direction and this thing then moves down moves here will you be able to explain it to your who doesn't understand that you don't hmm? you didn't understand Uh, let me do a small variation of this problem maybe then you will uh, 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 which makes it a little more complicated but maybe then it you will understand why we do this uh, if I if the ball you see what I'm doing is is I'm drawing I'm drawing on on a uh, on a graph uh, the velocity against the position I want to be able to tell you at this at this position this high uh, this high what is the velocity and I go up there and I can read it off you know? and then uh, uh, or you say the velocity is uh, so and so much. You give me the velocity, and I I can read off what is the position, what is the position of the particle. So the only thing is what I'm doing is I'm relating velocity and uh, and position all the time, and uh, as if and and I use time. Uh, time changes, and so this thing goes goes around and around yeah? so the, so the thing I wanted to show you which make it a little easier maybe to understand let me let me assume now that this ball doesn't bounce what we call elastic we, to, we talk about elastic that is that is a ball that bounces as high as you have dropped it and we we talk about inelastic uh, when it actually d loses some energy, uh, like 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 the duster which I dropped, and it didn't jump up at all. It's totally inelastic. Yeah? So let 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 me just uh, look at this uh, these examples. Let, it just happens. Look what happens where it drops. So we um, uh, we're taking a ball that is inelastic. Do you want to draw what happens? You, would you want to draw what happens for an inelastic ball? Okay. Okay. Um, I think this is pretty much for an elastic ball. 
yes. so it's, it's not losing energy. Yeah. But for an, an, an elastic ball, it would actually lose energy. Uh, one way to put it is, if you have, let's say, a maximum height where you drop it, uh, when you drop it here, it won't come back to the maximum height. It would go back uh, somewhere in between. And it will keep losing energy, something like that. So you can um, illustrate this in terms of potential. Okay. Yes. We should enter the yes. Well, we just just draw this now on that line. So what would happen here is that um, instead of coming back to the maximum potential, for instance, to somewhere midway. Yes. Uh, okay. okay. Maybe, maybe you you've done well. Uh, uh, so what he's saying is, uh, and I wasn't even relating it to this, but very nicely. So what happens is it goes here, and at the floor. When it hits the floor, it has less, less energy when it comes up because it has lost some energy. And so it goes this way and it goes back and it hits the floor again and it loses more energy. And it, it goes this way and this way. And, okay? So it falls down, it, it, like he shows here. It, it had the full, uh, the full height H, and now it has less H, and then it has less, less of it there, and so on. And so, so this is the way it falls down. And if I draw it on this thing, it's this way. Uh, this cycle, it does, it does the same. It, it doesn't even know it's going to hit the floor. So it hits the floor. And when it hits the floor, it doesn't get the full momentum to take it up there. It just gets part of it, and so it goes up to there. Okay? And now it falls back. It can't take, go to the full height because it hasn't got enough uh, energy. As we've seen here, it doesn't go to the full height. It comes, it goes down there. And now here, when it hits here, it, it falls the normal way. And then it bounces back and it, it, it loses energy again. So it comes like this. So it is a movement that goes like this. Uh, here and then this way and so on. And, so, and eventually it will be sit down there or it will be sitting down there. So this point here, when it sits here, is that it has no movement and it is on the floor. Okay? I think we must break now. Uh, and, and, and please, please, please make sure that you understand this little game. This is, a, this is so simple. It, I couldn't think of anything more simple than this. But it's a way of thinking about things. Huh? Uh, and, and we will be using this over and over because when I draw this diagram, I don't need to write all these formulas. I can just tell you what's happening in this specific case is is this is the phase diagram and I just draw it and then you can actually write down the formulas you know what's happening and so on you look worried <laughs> yeah do you understand it hmm? a little bit okay what's your name not, you, you're from, uh, from Madagascar. <laughs> yeah? And the, and the last uh, phase, does it go back to, uh, to a lower momentum to, the, to stop? Because I think it stops when it goes. Uh, well, it, it goes, it keeps on doing this. And then the, the, eventually it, it stops, yeah. Yeah. So the, the uh, yes.
No, it, in this case, which we have discussed now, we have discussed now a, a very specific way of losing energy. Uh, and that is when it hits the floor. And actually, we know what happens there at, on the floor because that's, that's this force. There's a time-dependent force. Just as it is there, um, it, it loses its, uh, its energy. So it loses it just at one point. Uh, we will now discuss, uh, uh, in, uh, after the break, we will discuss when, it is being lose, when it's losing uh, energy all the time. And let me make it just quite clear. Understanding this very well is important for understanding why we lose energy, if energy is conserved. I mean, somehow it's, it's sort of in the, in the general talk, people talk about energy is conserved, but on the other side, they lose energy. And we need to understand the mechanism, no? how this happens. Eh? And, uh, and so we, we are on that track towards that. And uh, when we draw things like this, it is just an easier way to, uh, to visualize what is happening. Okay? So we break now for five minutes. Huh? We, we're a bit over time. <laughs> uh, I just want someone to recap what I've done. To, yeah? Just, just, just tell the students that you understand it, and this is the way you understand it and see what, uh, not very long, just, just very quickly. Okay. No, not the whole thing, not everything. No, 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 no. no. Just, just explain this diagram and this diagram for a for a ball, for a ball that's bouncing. Yeah? When the ball is here, we have uh, some potential energy and uh, 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 no uh, kinetic energy. In this graph, uh, the potential energy, for example, is here. And uh, the position is here. Uh, 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 the total uh, are the total energy is conserved. It's like potential energy in the first time, initial time. Yeah. When the ball uh, falls on the ground, like this, the, the total energy is conserved. It's like this. But the, the potential energy uh, is in function of height is falling like this. In the ground, the potential energy is zero. The first uh, dropping, uh, when the first uh, the ball is here and drop in the ground. And when the ball uh, arrives in the ground, the momentum change the same to a plus of Minutes and 
Plus, uh, plus, plus, plus. Huh? It's the same of uh, d square equal k star minus mg x two over e x d equal square. It's one function. And this function is like when I put this function in this curve, we have when the bar is here, we have no no velocity. Yeah. In this axis. When you drop the bar, you uh, you can place this function here like this. And uh, uh, when uh, bar touch the ground, uh, the momentum change the scene, and is here, and uh, move up like this with this function. Same function. Okay. Well done. Any questions to him? Hmm? Everybody understands. Here's a question. Well, the potential energy is always mgx for this problem, which we have. Uh, it's always plus mgx. Uh, it's, it's, it's this line uh, for this problem. Yes. Yes. Just write that there. Okay, so if you keep on thinking, ask me, ask Andre, what's your name? You need, Mark. yeah, Mark, or well, ask Mark, I'm sure Ibrahim also knows, uh, ask Emma, uh, <laughs> or any of the tutors, they will also know, but make sure this is not a problem, it's, uh, because we're going to use this concept as we go along. So, in order to be efficient and not to write too many equations all the time, we will just make some drawings. And these drawings are all based on equations, as you have just, just seen. Yeah? Okay. Uh, now we get uh, to something uh, which is a little more complicated. 
uh, and that is <coughs> uh, we, we've already discussed what happens when when the ball drops uh, and is not uh, not elastic, it's inelastic, then, then it, it stops bouncing. Uh, but I want to consider another case, uh, and that is the case uh, when the ball is elastic, and when it hits the floor, it turns around the V, uh, totally elastic, but on its way down, it loses, it, it, it uh, feels the air resistance. And we can think about uh, what air resistance is, or we can uh, also think about dropping a stone in, in water, then we have water resistance, or we have, a, we have a medium, which can be the air, it can be water, it can be anything, in which we have this falling body. And uh, we want to I describe that, and uh, I'll tell you. Uh, we, you will see why why this is very very important. So what we actually have is that we have some additional point uh, contribution uh, to the to the force. So we now have m dv dt is equal to the force is minus mg I'm still looking at falling falling bodies uh, it's also minus mg that's going up huh? so, uh, uh, and then we have a we have a uh, a, f a force which depends on the velocity Well, you all know if you drive, uh, ride a bicycle or if you run or anything, uh, the force of the wind becomes stronger and stronger on you the, 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 the more quickly you, you ride. Eh? So there is, a, uh, there is a, a model which says that this is proportional to the velocity. And this is actually uh, something which goes by the name of uh, Stokes Law. Uh, and uh, f for a ball, Stokes gives a specific formula for that, uh, that it's k times v. Uh, now, in many cases, uh, that is not the best formula. Uh, in many cases, one should actually use uh, minus k times v squared. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and, and if, the, if the speeds are great, uh, large, you should actually use v squared. And, uh, but if the speeds are small, you can, you can use k is equal to v. And uh, this, uh, this uh, must worry you because it worried me when I first saw it. Uh, I remember when I was a student there were there, there was also a technical college and you know the students are always arrogant about about the people who are at the technical college and so uh, people were saying that the lecturer at the technical college uh, said the circumference uh, uh, of a circle is pi times r. And uh, all the students write it down, pi times r. <laughs> uh, but there was one guy who was, was difficult. Huh? <laughs> and he said, uh, you know, I, I thought that it was 2 pi times r. And so the uh, lecturer said, oh, no, no, that's only true for big circles. 
<laughs> now this story reminds me a little of that. <laughs> that if the velocities are small, uh, then it is k times v. And if the velocities are big, it's k times v squared. And, uh, but uh, we must, we must uh, I will explain uh, this further to you, but I'll just tell you, this is not a formula like the circumference of a circle, which is, a, which is a, basically a basic part of our thinking. It's an approximation. It's, it's a way people look at an approximation. And there's a very good way of looking at the different approximations. And it is, it is determined by something called the Reynolds, the Reynolds number. Uh, the Reynolds number. Uh, which, which is a number which you get uh, from, uh, uh, from fluid dynamics. And what we are now going to actually engage us into a very complicated field of fluid dynamics, but we're not going to do it that way. And this thing, uh, the, the Reynolds number in fluid dynamics is just a number which has no dimensions and uh, which is uh, determined by the density of the, of the uh, medium, the density of the air, uh, and, uh, uh, or the water, or every, anything. So it, it's, it's a very general thing, the Reynolds number. Uh, and uh, and the, uh, the dimension times the dimension of uh, the object. In our case, uh, the ball, it's the dimension, the, the diameter of, of the, the ball. Somehow the dimension for big, big balls, uh, uh, this, this, this uh, number is different than for, for small balls. Huh? And also, the next quantity is it depends on the velocity of the ball or the, the quantity which we have, and then it is divided by something uh, which we call the viscosity. Uh, and uh, so the Reynolds number, uh, and I'll, I'll define viscosity at the later stage to you, is a number. It is, has no units it's a number for any situation. You can calculate the Reynolds number. And if that Reynolds number is small, then we have something which we call laminar flow. So if you have an object here and you have uh, air passing by or water passing by or anything passing by, uh, if the velocity is small and the object is not too big, then you, you get these are the lines. You can do an experiment and you can, you can actually uh, you can you can uh, do an experiment in water here. Yeah. Very fun. Uh, when the uh, when the uh, Reynolds number is small. <laughs> I, I like I like your way of thinking about these things, uh, <laughs> but uh, you must understand 
that if you, in a practical situation, if you do a model, and uh, there are there are equations which determine the flow of material, and it's a very interesting field. It's it's called fluid dynamics, and fluids are gases and fluids. They, 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 they have the same... You must know a lot about fluid dynamics, Andre, Adrian? Not. <laughs> you come out of that group. Uh, not quite. Uh, not quite. Uh, fluid, fluid dynamics uh, is, is actually for our field of thinking about energy is extremely important but it's re very difficult and the reason it is difficult is because it's so complex the uh, the field of fluid dynamics has has very many different uh, properties and uh, most of it uh, can only be done uh, on a computer and these days there are lots there are lots of uh, big computer programs working uh, on uh, all sorts of uh, fluid dynamics so you you, uh, 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 you must understand we are talking about a complex uh, field and if we say something is small then let us just say for the time being uh, as we make the uh, the the uh, we start off with the velocity we increase it slowly the first section and I won't tell you how big that is because the Reynolds numbers will tell you and that's an experience actually uh, people prove that uh, later uh, is that when the you see in there's V in the Reynolds number hmm? so uh, the Reynolds number depends on 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 V uh, on V and on on this and uh, the density of the fluid and also on the viscosity and you know viscosity is a very difficult concept you see if you if you see if you see water you can actually understand it better than than in air but you think about air you think it's about the movement of individual uh, molecules they just move random uh, around and a lot of um, a, 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 a lot of uh, models about the air around us and the temperature and all these things is, is, is described in terms of this picture but actually the air itself has what we call a velocity and that is I'm, I know that I'm now digressing a little bit, uh, but it's okay because uh, uh, if if I have a, a liquid here or, or air or something here, and I have a I have a plate on top of it, and I I pull that plate, so I have a force in that direction and this plate has an area A then what will happen? it will draw the the molecules which are close to it, it will draw it with it but these molecules will draw the next ones also with it and so on and so what you, you will get is in fact a picture like this that this this is now the velocity which I draw of the molecules of the air, water or the air at the top and then a little further down it's like this and this and this and this and the way it this is distributed is is determined by uh, uh, by the velocity which is formally defined by f divided by a f divided by this area divide, uh, divided by the uh, dv uh, y uh, dz 
where this is the direction z and this is the direction y. And so this is, this is the formal definition of, of velocity. And so you can me measure this for, for many, many... Uh, 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 the formal de definition of uh, viscosity. And you can measure that for many places. Uh, but what I wanted to tell you uh, now is that if you do an experiment or a calculation or anything in fluid dynamics, the easiest way to think about it is called is is so-called laminar flow. That is the flow which goes like this: the uh, the liquid or the air moves like this, and then it moves around, and then it comes together again like this, and then it goes goes on. Yeah. Uh, of the ball. This is D. If this, and if it's, a, uh, it's, it's of the ball, and if it's not the ball, it's, it's, it's some measure of the size of the thing you're looking at. Uh, so, so if you, do, you, you use a big thing, of course, then uh, it will be more difficult to, be, to flow around like this. If it's small, it flows around uh, quite easily. Yeah? And so, this is the picture, sorry for this, but when the energy, uh, when the uh, velocity is small. <laughs> so this is when we start, when we, when, we, when we just let the thing flow a bit, then this will be a picture. And if you look at it and you keep on increasing the speed of, of the flow of the material past it, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll stay that way for a long time. And then at some point, it can't, it can't cope, it can't get all these things in place to come together nicely and so on. And what we then get is something called turbulence. And when you get turbulence, what, uh, so, and that happens when the, when the, uh, when the flow is, is more and more quickly, uh, quickly. At some stage, you get, uh, you get these lines, they, they sort of turn around here. Uh, and, uh, so, so, and, and then this actually increases that you get turbulence even on the, force, uh, on the front side, that uh, you have all sorts of whirlpools. You must see, I've seen that in, in, in water. Uh, if you look at a river, then, then suddenly you see the, the things are turning. Uh, <clears throat> this is turbulence. Huh? And if that starts increasing, then, then the whole picture which you can derive uh, for, uh, for laminar flow is not valid anymore. So you cannot assume the, uh, the, the, uh, the model of uh, uh, laminar flow. And that is uh, uh, when uh, at that time the, equations, the equation uh, in fluid dynamics changes drastically and you should actually use uh, minus kV squared. So this is, this is sort of the background. But it doesn't really matter for our uh, current uh, discussion uh, what we use. Uh, uh, we can use e either the one or the other and we can do the, uh, the calculation. Uh, it's what I want to discuss with you is uh, how uh, a system uh, which is governed by this equation uh, or by that equation, uh, how it is different uh, from, from the things which we have, have done so far. Uh, I, uh, I don't think I should start. Oh, it's five minutes still. Huh? Uh, 
uh, it is, uh, and and uh, and, and uh, let me let me uh, say here, when we do this, we will for the first time start to to understand uh, where does the energy go, because the the ball that is falling in air or in water through a medium is actually losing energy and, uh, uh, and, and uh, but we believe in energy conservation and so we, we have to think about uh, what, what happens to that energy and, and, uh, and through that I will briefly touch on aspects of thermodynamics uh, who knows thermodynamics? Hmm? Hands up, thermodynamics. Okay. Uh, so so let's let's just uh, for for a minute or two, and then we'll stop. Uh, just just to look at this equation. Uh, it has a, it has a certain property, uh, which uh, you will find in in lots of applications uh, of uh, uh, differential equations uh, in, in, in many fields and that is there is a point uh, of stability, a point where, uh, where things do not change and so when does the velocity not change? Well that is if this is zero so if zero is equal to minus mg uh, minus kV and then we see that that V is equal to so so we we see eventually immediately from this equation, uh, equation that there is a possibility that at some point the velocity will not increase. It will just be this value. And uh, aren't we lucky that this is so? Because uh, just imagine uh, uh, the hailstorms come and there's and they they are not they don't lose some of their energy to the, they hit you directly. I mean, if you count everything that drops down on the earth has actually something like a terminal velocity. Things don't fall down quicker and more quickly and more quickly all the time. They, they at some point they stop. Yes? Um, what does K Here. It's a constant, and uh, uh, which you can determine experimentally. Uh, but in Stokes' law, for balls and its laminar flow, uh, then a guy called Stokes. Uh, has derived uh, that K is equal to 6 pi R uh, times eta. So this is the, so, so in Stokes' law this will be minus 6 pi R and R there is the radius of the ball, eta times V. This is the, this, that's the force. And this was derived uh, in this specific application of uh, fluid dynamics uh, with laminar flow. You can derive that result. It's not so important for us that I will do it for you, uh, with you, but this is a result which you can derive. But it's not valid when, uh, when we get turbulent flow. 
Okay? Okay. Yes. And the weight is also for the and the looking at the cost of KV. And you worried about the units? Yeah. Well, K must just have the units. You must you figure it out for yourself. The, uh, K must have the units so that that is the force. Huh? Okay. So, so it's uh, it's newtons uh, per meter times seconds. Huh? That, that is the units of, of K. And uh, you have units for this, and you have units for all of these things, and you, you can figure out that all the units are right. And it's uh, a good practice to actually do that. Huh? But here, the way I wrote it, uh, it means the units are still hanging. You know, I'm not determining. But if you challenge me, as you did, then I can say, okay, this is the way I will determine the units of K. Okay? You wanted to ask something, uh, Alex? Okay. Okay, so uh, in the first and foremost, the beta is the viscosity of the medium? Yes. Okay. Uh, you mean in, in this formula? Yeah, in this one? Or yeah, up there, the yeah, form. yeah. So the beta is the viscosity of the medium? Yes. It can be the viscosity of air, if we drop it in air. It can be the viscosity of water, if we drop it in water. It's all the same. It's, it's, it's sort of... Okay. I think I've uh, kept you going for some time. Uh, are there, yeah, here's a question. Yes, like, for the constant you were talking of, every constant has a name, like G is gravitational constant, does the K have a name? Has K, G in it? Like G, no, I'm using an instance. Like yes. G, the relation G, you can call it gravitational constant. Yes. The K, you said it's a constant. Does it have any? Any name? Uh, no, I mean, uh, these, these things have names, yeah. And, uh, no, I, maybe I can look whether they give it a name. But uh, for me, it's, it's just, it's, it's actually on a, lower level of laws than we are talking here, but as uh, the gentleman, what's your name who's worried, what's your name who's worried, what's your name? Hmm? Loni. Loni. Where are you from? Kenya. From? Kenya. Kenya. Okay, but, but he's, uh, he's, he's, he's very right, one should actually know what you're talking about. But what we're talking about now is about approximations. We are not talking about basic basic theory. We are, we are looking at a situation where we can approximate it. And that's why we have these different sorts of ways we can look at how it could possibly be. Okay? But it doesn't have a, a name. If it has, I will tell you. <coughs> okay. Okay, uh, so by tomorrow uh, we will have a uh, uh, we will have a, a, the uh, things sorted out the the uh, mini projects that's right and uh, you must help me a little bit about how we organize the class and also with the tutors and so on and whether you want some of these things repeated. <clears throat> or whether you feel we can go ahead and so on and uh, you must also whether you want discussion within the class at times uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly, fairly open to, to various suggestions okay tell me when it's too easy and tell me when it's too difficult. Huh? Okay? Okay, until tomorrow.